Hello my soccer universe, there are only a few days of the year where it's so frigid outside that I have to be in the office with a pullover because I cannot really do the short sleeves, we're right under the roof and you know, a big window here. So yeah, I have a pullover, I pull the jersey over and wouldn't you know it, I finally have a Girona jersey, the unpacking video has not posted yet, but if you watch this review, I have a Girona jersey, I'll tell you the story about that once the unpacking goes live, which is probably gonna be around the week. And, but yeah, let's talk about a country where it's really, really warm. I'm not sure if they also have winter, but it's warmer definitely than in Austria. <laughs> uh, which is La Liga, which has reached a halfway pound point. And we also have a cup round to talk about. A cup round that maybe lacked a little bit excitement, although we had a couple of upsets in there. What's even more exciting is the draw for the next round, which I think is really, really interesting. There are quite a few dicey matchups in there but, but since we're at the halfway point as i said i also thought it's a good time to kind of look at where the season stands and with me having a girona jersey they are the sensation of the season so far and this is comes as news to no one sitting at 48 points level with real madrid 48 points it's a point less than they had last year already at the halfway point to me, it seems pretty much set on that uh, Girona will qualify for a European competition, even for the Champions League. Uh, they have a serious advantage over Barcelona, seven points, which, um, you know, regression to the mean happens. I could potentially see Barcelona catching Girona. However, on the other side, Barcelona also do not look well at all. In addition, Atletico Madrid, the other team that one thought they could have a claim for a potential title challenge, are 10 points behind the two leaders. And because they are two leaders, I think Atleti is out of it. Same thing is, I could see Barcelona catching Girona. I don't see Barcelona catching Real Madrid. I think the seven uh, points is just a, ste a step too far. Um, and if I look at the general form, Real Madrid not playing brilliantly per se. I mean, the brilliant play is coming from Verona. They are so much fun to watch. And I repeat myself, yes, it's not a fairy tale that everyone wants, but it's a modern uh, fairy tale, if you like, because the squad is still not a, a super expensive squad that they did, but they had some good uh, buys. And yes, the financial backing through the City Group definitely does help. Uh, they are an exciting team team to watch and Mitchell is doing amazing work there and I think there are already a few rumors out there that he might be joining another Catalan club relatively soon. But yeah, as I said, uh, Giron is more exciting than the Real Madrid, but Real Madrid is more solid, have the more quality in the squad. So I would think this will show towards the end of the season. Um, Atletico Madrid, I think, have a real fight on their hands to actually make even Europe. I mean, yes, La Liga could get a fifth spot, although I'm, I'm not sure how, how well that, that looks. But both of the Bascals, especially Atletico Club, are really making a push there. And I have said it before, I would really love it if we have not only one, but two teams pushing into the top four and that one of the big guys uh, misses out. The moment is more likely Atletico Madrid, although I have a feeling they might get also their uh, stuff together because, uh, let's face it, their game against Girona was not that bad at all. It's just they have now four away losses in a row, which is a first under Diego Simeone. And similarly, uh, if you look at the bottom, we have Sevilla precariously uh, dangling there. I also think that the quality will show through, but this is not a squad that is... You know, it's not a club that we are, we are, we are, we are relatively calm. Celta Vigo, as we will see, has finally gotten a win. I think this is a team that is much, much better than their results are. And maybe this will come uh, shine through. In the end, it will come down to Cardiff, Granada and Almeria. Um, maybe an Alaves could be implicated in that as well. So this is my quick summary. So let's look back at the midweek La Liga round that we had um, from last Tuesday to Thursday. It started off with a really weird one where Getafe was hosting Rayo Vallecano at the uh, Wanda Metropolitano Atletico's home ground because their home game was kind of uh, because of a pitch invasion was banned but they found a loophole blah 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 it was really really weird it was also weird as they got two red cards and one more uh, for someone off the bench and uh, was an easy 2-0 winner Real Sociedad in a derby against Alaves 
uh, saw an early red card for Ramiro for handling the ball. Um, but it took a penalty in the 76th minute for uh, Alaves to finally take take the lead. And you thought that Real Sociedad, uh, you know, having a re in the league, they are actually much worse than in the Challenger Champions League like, as of late. In the end, they get an equal through Zubi Mendy in stoppage time, kind of hanging in there for the European spots. Then the uh, Derby de la Comunidad, an easy 3-1 win for Valencia over Villarreal. Villarreal is a team that is definitely not looking right as well. Uh, Yaremchen Pepelo with, with two penalties was already 3-0. The Moreno pulls one back. Uh, in the in a relegation battle, Granada get a big 2-0 win over Cadiz. Uh, you know, it is a Andalusian derby, but um, not sure if it will be enough for Granada to move on. As I said, uh, Celta get a huge win over Betis. Betis took an early lead, but Aspas with a penalty, and then deep in stoppage champs, Wettberg turned right around, and I think this was actually also fair. Strand Larsen having a, a goal also called, called off. It was high time for Celta to finally get a big win, and this was that, and I hope this will spur on. But as I said, this is a much better team than one would think. But uh, the games on Wednesday were all about the title race, and they were very different games. Because this was a typical Real Madrid home home, home game, uh, you know, after at the break, you don't want to exert yourself. You do, you play, you keep it solid, blah, blah, and then after Modric Modric kind of Rüdiger uh, jumps up in the 78th minute and gets the winner. Three points for Real Madrid, no points dropped, you can move on. On the other side, Girona did Girona things. And it was the game of the season, what happened between Girona and Atletico Madrid. What a brilliant game that was. It was one of those games that I pulled on and I thought I can do maybe some work um, while watching. Uh, almost instantly, my eyes were glued to the screen and I went and down to my wife to watch it on the big screen because I, I didn't want to put with you just on the um, on the iPad. That was a great game, especially the first half. I mean, Girona came out flying, having already a big chance in the first half, Valieri in the second, the first minute, but then in the second gives uh, Girona a 1-0 lead. Uh, and they were pushing forward more and more or less with the first chance and uh, you really thought it was an offside at first. Morata gets an equalizer almost out of nowhere and that stunned Girona a little bit. However, defensive error, uh, Savio allows Savio to reclaim the lead and then after a corner, and again it was an onslaught from uh, Gi Girona, Daily Blind is standing there on the post and just puts it in from a short distance. It's 3-1 and you're thinking they're gonna steamroll Atleti. But that was the greatness of this game that just a few minutes later, again, almost out of nowhere, the power plays to Morata, and Morata had his shooting boots on and uh, makes it 3-2, and two minutes later got an equalizer as well, but this time it really was an offside. A breathless first half, where Girona definitely was the better, better team, but Atletico Madrid towards the end already said, oh, in defense, Girona is vulnerable, and they went straight on the first 15 minutes of the second half, if not the 20. It was all Atleti, and you really thought that they could turn it around. Had already a few really good chances uh, uh, that uh, got saved by Gazaniga. Uh, Morata then gets the equalizer, and for me, it seemed it's only a matter of time until Atletico Madrid are going to turn this around. Morata getting his first La Liga hat trick to boot as well. However, that was made in the only period that after Atletico Madrid could not keep up the steam, that the game a little bit slowed. And you know, there was also some change, uh, so some change especially uh, Valeri, Torre and Dovbik all came off. And yes, Duhani comes on, who is uh, the stalwart for G G Girona. Uh, it was also a requirement that Paul came off for Correa and uh, Depay. And the game got a little bit slower. And you had the feeling there will only be a winner if there's a lucky punch. And then the lucky punch comes late on when uh, Porto plays a ball over to Martin, who um, is a little bit stumbling through the athletic defense, but then with a brilliant shot out of normal. I mean, he basically lifts the ball while falling into the top, top, top corner, gets a 4 3 for Girona at that point. It was actually a rather unlike like the goal, and the craziness continues. This was the game of the season in La Liga for me. Uh, and I was so happy that I could watch this one. And yeah, I told you I'm all in on Girona now. As I said before, I don't quite think that they will go on to win La Liga, but it's still a brilliant performance. And they're the team to watch in the smallest stadium. 
of La Liga as well, although I think the Montilivi looks a whole lot bigger than it actually is. That stadium is smaller than the last stadium. That's just the size of it. Uh, other games, we had on a Thursday also Suna get a 1-0. Uh, Almeria Athletic Club continued a good form 2-0 at Sevilla afterwards. Sergio Ramos, you know, had a during in, 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 a, a, a discussion with a fan who basically said, you know, player B be a little bit more re, re, re respectful while also admitting, yeah, he understands the frustration of the fans. It was actually a pretty good Sergio Ramos moment for once. And then Barcelona, oh, Barcelona, Barcelona. The one thing that annoys me with Barcelona, even when they're playing bad, they're getting wins. Uh, that's also not speaking well for La Liga because uh, this Barcelona side only city, uh, sitting in third place it seems too high given the performances that they have uh, they were down through Munia El Adadi former Bar Bar Barca player and uh, Las Palmas really caused Barca some problems yes Torres pulls one uh, back because of some less legs defending um, but you really thought this is gonna be a one one there was yes a little bit more in the second half first of all it was really bad uh but it seemed like to go into the just result which would, would have been a draw and then a really soft penalty and Gundogan gets the winner for barcelona as i said uh as bad as barcelona at times look on the pitch and this is absolutely not the barcelona this is not barcelona like i uh, hold barcelona to a higher standard to be honest um they're getting their results and that is something that has to be given to Xavi as well playing bad and still winning uh, there's something there so um i the the rumors around Xavi well i understand them i think Barcelona will do well to hold on to him and not replace him with uh, a fancy new coach in town Michel uh from just up the road in Gio. Rona. Uh, so at the moment, uh, the standings in, in, in the Liga, we talked already about it in the preamble. Uh, it's pretty clear, as I said, uh, Bilbao is maybe still on the outside looking for a Champions League spot and on the bottom. Um, pretty much Mallorca, Alaves, Cadiz, Granada and Almeria, especially the latter two, are looking already as being down and out, as you would expect. Uh, we have a round coming up, but it's not a full round for the simple reason that there's a Super Cup going on. So yeah, go figure. And as always, they're gonna give us, La Liga gives us one little uh, treat, which is of course the Basque Derby between Athletic Club and the Real Sociedad. All the Super Cup teams, Barcelona, Sassuna, Atleti and Real Madrid will have to play then at the end of the month to complete uh they are fixtures but other than that yeah we have also an Andalusian derby in there but uh it's not the greatest round i guess my focus on the weekend will be other elsewhere except for this basque derby that actually looks already quite juicy let's talk spanish cup um two upsets plus another home win kind of tell the story uh we you see here the results of the top teams from the last season there are two two results i want to point out that are not listed here we see alaves beating betis at home that i think would count as an upset and on the very bottom unionista salamanca from the third tier eliminated via real after a penalty shooter lengthy penalty shooter one has, has to say this was also a game that was interrupted in overtime because there was a power outage and then it was completed uh, la later. In, in, interesting enough, I think um, Villarreal took a late lead and then Unionistas could e equalize. And as I said, won the penalty shooter. Unionistas Salamanca, also an interesting story. They, of course, won of the two successes of a former Ude Salamanca, who is sometimes played in La Liga, uh, folded in 2013. Other than that, there were not really many upsets. I mean, Tenerife beating Las Palmas in the Kaka Kaner Derby 2-0, two red cards also, one for each, but the goals came, came, came early, definitely would count as an upset too. And as I said, Alaves against the Real Betis. But Atletico Madrid had to fight hard at Lugo to get a 3-1 win. Girona not so much at Elche, uh, as a match that already was played last season. Actually, that that I was saw Girona in virtue in a little bit virtue jerseys, but you know, uh, Real Madrid did not really have much to do. Let's face it. Uh, I'm, I'm Arandina is fourth tier. 
they turned on a Josiele penalty and then Brahim Diaz with a typical goal. Uh, I think the biggest one is that Aragulia got to play. Rodrigo also gets a goal, but also now Nacho Fernandez scores an own goal. A deep, deep in stoppage time to give the locals something to cheer for. Uh, the other one, Barcelona against Barbastro. Yeah, this was a really, really rough watch <laughs> at times. But in the end, Barcelona see it through. Uh, I want to also mention Sevilla's 2 1 win at Racing Ferrol, uh, which was also not that, that, that easy because Racing Ferrol had equalized and were low and good at, uh, at the beginning of the second half. However, Sevilla twice hit the woodwork. It was on a red card for Manzanara as well, who scored the equalizer for Racing Ferrol. But Racing Ferrol probably had the best beer sponsor of all time with the Estrella Galicia and then around a beer glass. That looked br brilliant. Uh, that, that would be a nice jersey to add to any collection, I am sure. But I already said the big one uh, is the draw for, for the next round. Yes, the first Unisa Salamanca against Barcelona. Uh, great for Salsa Salamanca that they can host Barcelona. No truth, they will get, get enough. So as I said, Barcelona is rumbling and stumbling, but usually getting the uh, thing over the line. But then look at all the, um, ma the other matchups. We have again an island duel between Tenerife and Mallorca. Uh, Getafe Sevilla is maybe um, a little bit outside, but also sooner Real Sociedad. This is almost a derby. Yeah? Navarra is not quite the best country, but you know, spiritually, they are very, very, very similar. Uh, Valencia against Celta Vigo. Okay, we have a true Basque between Athletic Club and Deportivo Alaves. And then the big one, Atletico Madrid against Real Madrid. Doesn't get bigger than that. And it's hosted at Atletico's home ground. And then uh, Coach Mitchell is again roasting Rayo, and he, of course, played for uh, Rayo for a long time. So there's also a very interesting matchup. This round has me truly excited, I have to say. And uh, this will also be played mid-January. So looking forward to that. I think we come back from the Super Cup. We're probably also athletic against the Real Madrid could play. Maybe we get a double. Definitely interesting stuff. Definitely interesting stuff. I will not talk about the Super Cup because this is a bogus competition uh, and it being hosted in the South River doesn't help it. In any case, this was it from me from La Liga for a while now. Let's see when the next video will come. I will surely do some short videos. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy us and I will talk to you soon more about my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!